Aside from the main line, there are many branch lines where the engines of the Southern United Railroad can travel on. However, there is one line where none of the engines are allowed, and that's the Navy branch. That branch line is actually owned by the Navy and splits from Taylor and Chrissy's branch line just south of White House Cove. The line is run by a switch engine that goes by the name Lieutenant. Whenever the engines have loads for the Navy, they switch them into a siding and Lieutenant comes to collect them. After he and his crew make sure everything is ship shape, they head off down the Navy branch. All the edges are okay with this arrangement. All that is, except for one. Andrew always wanted to take the loads down the Navy branch himself. I don't understand why us engines can't just take the loads down the line for you. Because, said Lieutenant, it is private property and you civilians are not allowed on Navy property. But it's not fair, replied Andrew crossly. Life is not made to be fair, young Andrew. Now if you excuse me, I must be off. And Lieutenant rumbled away, leaving Andrew very cross indeed. That evening at Denville, Andrew was asking Malcolm, the retired Navy engine, all about the Navy Yard. It's not the fact that they're doing anything secretive, really, said Malcolm. But the reason why you're not allowed is more of a security issue. When I used to work in the Navy Yard, it was always like that. But it's not like I'm going to mess up anything, replied Andrew. I just want to know what goes on down at the Navy Yard. I mean, I don't understand why I can't take the cars down there one day. You might as well forget about it, Andrew, said Larry. You're not going to the Navy Yard. But Larry, there's got to be a way I can go down there, Andrew replied. You could go down there if you were given special permission, Malcolm said. I remember when I worked for the Navy, I would bring special passenger trains to the Navy Yard so they can go for a tour. Now that sounds like a great idea, replied Larry. Andrew, why don't you ask if you can go down the line? That does sound like a good idea, Andrew said. I'll try it. He asked both Ray and Mr. Egan, and they denied him. He then asked Lieutenant the next time he went to the Navy Yard Junction, and he told him no. Andrew was losing patience. About two days later, Andrew was headed down the main line with two empty passenger cars. He then came upon Ian, who had derailed, and Amber ready to help him back onto the rails. Ian, what happened here? asked Andrew. Those stupid freight cars pushed me over the switch too fast, Ian replied crossly. Don't worry, Ian. I'll soon have you back on the line in no time, Amber said. Andrew then continued on his way, but Ian's accident had given him an idea. The next day, Andrew arrived in the yards to collect his freight cars. Some of them were bound for the Navy Yard. Hey, freight cars, he whispered. I need your help. With what? They replied. Do you think you could give me a bump when we get to the lighthouse? The cars were delighted. Sure, Andrew, no problem. You can count on us. Once Andrew's driver was ready, he headed on his way. Every wise engine knows that you cannot trust freight cars under any circumstances. It was unlucky that Andrew had forgotten this. When they got to the lighthouse, the freight cars surged forward. On, 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 they shouted. Andrew's driver and farmer were knocked out of their seats and onto the floor. Andrew was running out of control, which was exactly what he wanted. The switch up ahead was set for the Navy line. And unfortunately, the towerman didn't get moved with Andrew's runaway until it was too late. Andrew swerved off the branch line into the Navy Yard interchange and raced past Lieutenant. Andrew, what is the meaning of this? Come back here at once, he demanded. But Andrew laughed. You can't catch me, he shouted. But Andrew wasn't laughing long. Ahead on his line was a derail. Oh no, he shouted. Stop! Stop! But the cars kept pushing him onward. On, 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 they laughed. Andrew hit the derail and plunged up the rails into the sea. Luckily, no one was hurt. After pulling away the cars, Lieutenant helped Andrew back on the rails. Unfortunately, Mr. Egan had been dropped off by Taylor. 
Andrew, that was a very irresponsible and dangerous stunt you just pulled. I know that now, Mr. Regan. I'm sorry. I think the perfect punishment for you is to work at the Navy Yard, Mr. Egan said. Andrew was confused. He wanted to go to the Navy Yard, and now his punishment for the accident was to work there. I wonder why I'm given that punishment, he thought to himself. He soon found out. Come on, Andrew, move it, move it, move it. Chrissy's bringing more tank cars. You must get to the Navy Interchange on the double. Is that clear? Uh, sir, yes, sir, replied Andrew. Lieutenant ran the whole operation like it was a boot camp. Andrew then hurried away to collect Christie's cars. He wished now that he hadn't been so silly.